Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting day of the study of dynamics. Uh, today we're going to be talking about rectangular coordinates. Uh, previously we were talking about rectilinear motion and because uh, we're no longer in a straight line we're going to be calling this curvilinear motion. So you can see I've already drawn the rectangular component um, graph here or coordinate system and we can see that we have some point out here uh, whatever that point might be and we have some radial vector r uh, so we have to define some things here the first being the position of that point and the position of that point in relationship to this radial vector uh, using our our unit vectors of i in the x direction j in the y and k in the z we can say we're traveling or it is located some x distance in the i hat direction plus uh, y distance in the j hat plus z distance in the k hat so uh, hopefully you've seen this before just a way to use unit vector notation for the position of a vector uh, with that in mind if i wanted to know the overall magnitude of what this this radial vector is then I would use a little Pythagorean theorem and I would just take the square root of the distances in the x direction, y direction, and z direction squared. So that would of course give me the overall length uh, or distance away from the origin for that uh, radial vector. And uh, so I may not only want to know the magnitude of r, but I may want to know the direction of r our radial vector and the, the typical notation would be uh, something like the unit vector for this radial vector would be this x distance over the total magnitude of the distance in this i hat direction plus the y over the total distance in the j hat plus the z distance over the total distance in the k hat it's kind of like a proportionality of uh, distance in each each component direction after I have my position defined, uh, building on our terms that we've already uh, developed before with linear motion, we can move up a term and look at our velocity of our particle. In this case, we know that our velocity is equal to the rate of change of a position with respect to time. So if we look at that and look at it in our component form, we can break it into each different direction. So our, our rate of change in the x direction with respect to time in the i hat plus our uh, rate of change in the y with respect to time in the j hat plus our rate of change in the z with respect to time in the k hat direction. Uh, and so if I were to write more of a formal definition, we're just saying our velocity in the x i hat plus our velocity in the y j hat plus our velocity in the z K hat. Oh dear, picking the wrong tabs. A little rough start today. Uh, now, it's an important concept in, in dynamics. Uh, there's an important notational part that we need to cover. So when we talk about this whole derivative with respect to time, uh, what we can do is we can represent this as a single dot over your variable. So anytime you see a dot over a variable, I think this is the first class we really deal with that in our course sequence here at Ohio University anyways. A dot over a variable indicates or means that we are taking the derivative. Oh, my stylus just broke. Let me grab a different stylus the derivative with respect to time. So if that's the case, then what we're really saying is the velocity in the x direction can be denoted by an x dot. And it's a little bit of a bigger dot, so you can actually see it. Uh, the velocity in the y direction is equal to y dot, and the velocity in the z direction is equal to z dot. So as of course we know that the uh, derivative of x with respect to time is velocity, derivative of y with respect to time is velocity, and derivative of z with respect to time is velocity. So that's a, that's a, the notation we'll be using in this 
course for the rest of the semester. Um, and all of those are uh, in, uh, in vector form. If we wanted to look at the speed, which is a scalar, or the magnitude of our total velocity, uh, once again, we can use Pythagorean and say our total velocity would be equal to the square root of our velocity in each component direction. So velocity of the x squared, y squared, and z squared direction. Uh, after we have our velocity, we can step that up a level and talk about our acceleration. And similar to rectilinear motion, we know that our acceleration is just equal to the, the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. Uh, so looking at this in our unit vector notation, I could say it's the derivative of the velocity in the x direction with respect to time i hat plus our derivative with the velocity in the y direction with respect to time j hat plus our derivative of the velocity in the z direction with respect to time in the k hat. And building on this notation uh, we developed, we can say that that's equal to ax i hat plus a y j hat plus a z k hat. So that's our basic definition. Uh, let me draw a little deal around that. But now building on our new notation with this dot notation our acceleration in the x direction would, is equal to the velocity, the derivative of velocity with respect to time, which now we're calling v dot. Or what I can say is looking at the position, it's, the, it's basically the double derivative, right? Or, or two dots. So we have x double dot. And same thing with the velocity in the y. So we have a velocity dot or y double dot. And acceleration in the z, the velocity of the z direction dot or Z double dot. Very important enough to put a box around it. Very important enough. Good times. And just like with velocity, we can find an overall magnitude of our acceleration by just using Pythagorean and saying it's equal to the square root of ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. Uh, let's take a look at an actual example. Uh, within dynamics to see how this would work. So this is an example and if you have the Hibbler textbook this is example uh, what is it 12.9 from Hibby, Hibby Dibbler. Hibby, Hibby to Dibbler. Shouldn't make fun of his name. Using his example after all I should give him some respect right some mad props. Thanks Hibber. Alright so let's say we are given a balloon. I guess it doesn't matter that it's a balloon, but we are given that it is a balloon. My guess is there's some kind of cool picture in the text, which I'm not going to be able to draw. Uh, a balloon travels with a function of y with respect to x, so that we have y is equal to x squared over 10 in our units, our feet for that. Uh, and we're also going to be given that x little hand here to make it a little more clear. And x is going to be a function of time, 8t, where t is in seconds. So this is uh, clearly, as soon as you see this y is a function of x, you're probably automatically thinking, well, I'm going to have to use this chain and product rule. And sure enough, you will. What we're looking to find in this case is the uh, magnitude and direction of our velocity and our acceleration vectors at a particular time, in this case, time is equal to two seconds. Now, some of you might be asking, why couldn't I just take this x equals 8t, plug it into y equals x squared over eight, come up with a function of y as a function of t, and then take the derivative like we've done before. You kind of can do that, and it works, um, but as far as moving forward within the course, I really think you need to do this formal way and understand this formal way uh, because we're going to get complex problems where you can't actually do that. So, so let's see how we would do that using this whole 
uh, chain rule. Uh, so for our solution, what I'm going to do is uh, start with what I know. I know that x is equal to 8t. Well, if I know that, I already can uh, take the derivative of that, which is my velocity in the x, which is the same thing as saying x dot. And x dot then must be equal to 8 feet per second. Uh, and then for my y, I know that y is equal to x squared over 10. And if I were to take the derivative of both sides, so let's take ddt of both sides. What I would end up with is a y dot, because the derivative of y with respect to t is just y dot. And then for the 2x, sorry, the x squared over 10, I end up with 2x over 10. But once again, anytime you have a derivative, uh, not with respect to time, but I want with respect to time, I'm going to add in whatever I took the derivative of, put a little dot above it, meaning I have my, um, my dx dt at the end there. And that, once again, is my chain rule piece. Don't forget that part. It's easy to drop that and get really lost in the process. So what does this mean in terms? We already said that uh, y dot is velocity y. So velocity y is equal to x over 5 times my velocity in the x. So now I have a relationship between x and y with our velocities. And uh, we want to know at t equal 2 seconds uh, what's going on here. Well, I know that my x distance, my x placement, my displacement, will be two, 8 times 2 which is equal to 16 feet. So that was given in the first part of the problem with our x is equal to 8 times t. And as far as our velocity in the x, oh dear, auto, auto scrolling today. So our velocity in the x is equal to 8 feet per second. We've already solved that up here. Um, and it's constant, right? And because it's constant, I know my acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. So with this rectangular component, you're always keeping your x and y is totally separate. My velocity in the y direction uh, is equal to this, uh, let's see, 16. And that gives me like 25.6 feet per second. So my total velocity would be equal to the square root of this 8 and the 25.6, giving me something like 26.8 feet per second. So that's my total velocity. And if I wanted a direction, what I would be looking at is a little trigonometry where I have you know eight and going in the x and I have 25.6 so the the theta that I'd be solving for is from the, the horizontal uh, so that theta would be equal to the inverse tan of the opposite over adjacent 25.6 over 8 which is like 72.6 degrees make the problem a little more complete so I have answered the velocity I need to move on to the acceleration piece and to look at the acceleration, what I'm going to want to do is take the derivative with respect to time of my velocity. So I want to take the derivative with respect to time of this y dot, which is the velocity in the y with relation to shift to x. So I have 2x over 10 uh, x dot. Uh, so if I do that, I end up with an acceleration of the y. Well, let me start with just doing a dot. So let's do y double dot is equal to the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of 2x over 10 is 2 over 10, uh, but then I get an x dot. And then I still have that second x dot hanging out there. So that was the derivative of, if we were to call that the first and the x dot being the second. The derivative of the first times the second, plus I have the first, which is 2x over 10, times the derivative of x dot. The derivative of x dot is x double dot. 2x, a little sloppy. Uh, simplifying that slightly, I'll put it down here to save room, I end up with one-fifth x dot squared plus x, x double dot. 
uh, in writing it in just replacing the dots with since I just define that my y double dot is the exertion of the y is equal to one fifth what is x dot a single dot is my velocity in the x direction squared plus x is my distance x double dot is my acceleration in the x uh, the acceleration in the x by the way is zero and the reason I know it's zero is because up here I found that there is no acceleration in the x because our velocity in the x is constant so constant velocity in the x uh, and then at, finally I can say at t equal two seconds I can plug that in I know my acceleration in the y is equal to one-fifth uh, times lost in the x is eight I guess I don't really need brackets because the whole second part is whatever uh, squared giving me 64 fifths or 12.8 feet per second squared and there is no acceleration in the x as we just said so acceleration in the x is zero uh, so the answer would be just that there's no reason to use a Pythagorean theorem. We have our total velocity. If we wanted to know our direction, it's all in the y, so theta would be equal to 90 degrees, right? Because it's straight up in the air. So 90 degrees up, something like that. So that's kind of a, a in-depth example of uh, using the rectangular coordinates and also using the fact that you have to use the chain and product rule. Uh, good luck and thanks for watching.